Our third presenter is from Taranaki, Jonathan Albert. He's going to talk to us about an audit of low blood pressure in hospitalised patients requiring house surgeon review. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. Um, I'm a medical educator, and before the national rollout of the system, I started teaching house surgeons on deteriorating patients. And I decided to do a clinical audit over a couple of years to see was my teaching making um, any difference. And my teaching was targeted at house surgeons reviewing patients with no support after hours, registrars at home, or in ED. Um, and the oversight these house surgeons get is very variable. Um, sometimes they really are just all on their own. Um, I thought hypotension would be a good variable because um, it, it's easy to measure, it's on the charts, um, and I could just make an arbitrary time. Uh, but when I designed the audit, what I couldn't find was data on what's an acceptable time of low blood pressure. Um, in anaesthesia, it's five minutes. Um, if you're ASA 3 and you have more than five minutes of very low blood pressure, you're more likely to die. Um, and the times I saw in the wards weren't those kind of times that I was used to in anaesthesia or ICU. Um, so I really wanted to look at blood pressure as a real world thing that house surgeons actually do. And I added short and long term mortality out of interest just because I was looking at the data. And I thought looking at hypotension would give me a chance to um, just get a snapshot of what house surgeons actually do, uh, what kind of work do they do. I'd like to acknowledge Emma McKay, who was a house surgeon when I started teaching, as was Sam Shaw. Uh, they helped me with the first year of audit of this, of this um, project. And um, this is Jess Hadlow. She helped me with the second year. And Emma provided her with quite a bit of feedback as well. Um, I hadn't really thought about it at the time, but Jess was a second year medical student that was doing a summer studentship for me, looking at this project. And Jess is now a fifth year medical student and is brave enough to get up and speak in front of all of you. So I'll let her talk for a bit. Tēnā <laughs> koutou um, This was a retrospective audit that I completed the second half of during my Taranaki-based summer studentship. The first six months of data was collected by the two house officers named and they taught me directly how to collect and access the data. We did our best to collect accurate objective outcomes, for example, times, blood pressure measurements, and rates of IV fluid use. Mortality at discharge and at one year were also analysed. This data was collected from task manager, patient notes, early warning scores, and fluid charts. Task manager is a computer program used across the hospital for nurses to log jobs on for the on-call RMO. It allows prioritisation of tasks, although the highest security tasks are always paged directly to the on-call doctor. And we use Task Manager as a reservoir for cases. The comments can be quite descriptive. This is just a general Task Manager. Yeah. Um, one of the more important aspects of my short speech is that when I did this audit, I was in my pre-clinical years in medical school with no practical experience in the hospital. I was essentially an outside observer. Because I had to read through patient notes to find some data, I found that I got quite upset by the evident gaps in communication that sometimes made me feel like I, was, like I wasn't reading about the same patient from one note to the next. It felt like no one was really paying attention. Dr. Albrecht reminded me recently of my reaction back then, and after only two years in the hospital, I was surprised to find that I'd become somewhat desensitised to what had previously upset me. This realisation and attending this conference has given me insight as to about how, as a trainee intern and future doctor, I need to take care that I don't normalise the abnormal and use clinical knowledge and, as importantly, my taringa to listen and care for the people and their families and whānau that I will be looking after. Naimahi, thank you. Um, thanks for that, Jess. Yeah, I felt really guilty at the time, like I'd put her off medicine forever because she was really nice again. But they, they were almost dead last night, and now the note says, if cleared by physio, can go home. Um, <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, that's... That's probably not ideal, but, <laughs> but I was quite desensitised to it myself, so I got a bit of a shock. Uh, 
and, and thought hmm, this probably wasn't a great preclinical project. Uh, but she did very well. And you can see a lot of um, tasks were, were screened, um, and this led to over six month periods, uh, over one case of hypotension per day after hours that was reviewed by a house surgeon that wasn't in ED, ICU or HDU. The patients were pretty um, evenly split, about half medical and half a variety of surgical specialties. Uh, interestingly, these patients who were the lower rent patients, that task manager is there for house surgeons to look at when they have time. They have to actually go to a computer, sit down. They don't even get an alert that this patient is sick. Um, so a lot of these patients didn't require fluids, uh, but we'd excluded people that were palliative care. Uh, we'd excluded people that that was their normal blood pressure. Um, almost all of the time, a senior, including a registrar, wasn't even told the house surgeon reviewed, and it was left at that. Almost no one was transferred to HDU, 0.5 and 1% of patients. And no patient had, uh, well, one person in the first year had a cardiac arrest call. No other patients did. So that's the kind of patients I was looking at was lower acuity, appropriate house surgeon review patients. Um, but the time to get the fluid prescribed was 99. Medians are better because there are extreme outliers. Um, but the median time, so half the patients had received fluid within 82 minutes. And if we look at the time to restoration of their blood pressure, it was over two hours till the 50th percent person had a restoration of their blood pressure. And from an anesthesia and intensive care background, I found that pretty, uh, I wasn't expecting it to be that long. Uh, this is the same data with the, um, the mean times changed uh, to exclude one outlier who had, what, a time of 2,270 minutes to restoration of their blood pressure. <laughs> um, the next slide is probably the slide that surprised me the most, uh, and I really wasn't expecting this. So you had a over 90% chance of making it out of hospital, but you had a 30% chance of being dead at the end of the year which um, I'd gone out of my way to exclude palliative care patients. Uh, we know from anaesthetic data that short periods of low blood pressure are extremely damaging. Um, and these were patients that never got a more senior review than an intern. Um, and I wasn't expecting this data. Uh, so I thought, what am I going to do with this data? And I went to the hospital. Um, and I thought if I presented it, people would be interested. But the truth is, they weren't very interested. Um, I don't know why that is, but I think people, um, the surgeons thought the physicians should be reviewing my patients more often, and the physicians thought the surgeons should be reviewing their patients more often, and the physicians thought that blood pressure is not really that relevant to general medicine. Um, I'm not a physician. Um, <laughs> but I, I thought that it was. Um, but around about the time, because when this data was collected, I had to wait for the one-year mortality before I could. So it was 2017 by the time we had all the data complete. And that was the exact same time that, um, that this national program rolled out. Um, if you consider task manager was there for jobs that aren't important, that don't require you to even phone a house surgeon, in our hospital, every single day, somebody had a very high early warning score that didn't warrant paging. And that changed after the system came out to, if your blood pressure was less than 90, you had to physically phone. And if you put it on task manager, um, you were told that was an inappropriate use of the, of the early warning score. Um, so in my ignorance, being from anesthesia and ICU, I didn't really understand the function of task manager. I was just using it to um, identify patients. But what I found was a, a cultural problem in the hospital. Um, and this went further. Um, in our surgical wards, we found out that quite frequently post-op patients didn't have their blood pressure measured for six hours because the anesthetic was still working. And that's why the blood pressure would be low. So I went back to all the anaesthetists in my department and asked them, when are blood pressures recorded in post-op patients? Nobody knew. 
And now, uh, thanks to our new educators, there's a much more robust process of when blood pressures are recorded. So I used this data to argue we needed more uh, support for our junior staff, which I was successful with. And I asked my senior colleagues, um, how much attention were they paying to what their health students was doing? And could we improve those relationships? Um, there were limitations of the study. It's a retrospective chart review. Um, I'm looking from a particular perspective, so I could be very biased. Uh, we didn't look at higher acuity patients, but I really just wanted patients that house surgeons saw. I didn't want patients that should have been seen by an ICU because I was trying to teach house surgeons and see where that was going. I also um, proved my teaching wasn't very good at saving lives, but I didn't mean to prove that. Um, <laughs> um, and this data is incomplete. It's based on chart reviews. There's all sorts of reasons that could have explained why these patients were like that. Um, but I think it showed that really it was a, we had a major flaw in our system in how we looked after our patients, and we've gone some way to correct that. Um, but I always ask this question at the end, which is, um, are we all doing enough to support our first-year doctors? Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, and especially Jess. Are there any questions for them? You're making me work hard, aren't you? <laughs> what do you think the cause of the hypotension was looking through the files? It's a, um, it's, it was so variable. It was such a large cohort of patients. Um, some of the time it would be medication. Um, most of the time it wasn't judged to be something that would need an escalation. Um, only 28% of these people received fluids. Um, so it wasn't hypovolemia that was the main problem. And most of these people had their blood pressure restored within two hours, and most of them made it out of the hospital. So I don't think they needed more intervention for their blood pressure at that time, but I think we just demonstrated that even the lower acuity patients, um, they're quite vulnerable patients. Their chance of not living a year is, is quite significant, even though they tend to make it out of hospital. So that's my next question. Yeah. Um, uh, is that relatively poor medium to longer term mortality consistent with that patient population, or could potentially the hypotension be contributing to it? I think the hypotension is contributing to it. I think uh, it may not have killed you, but it could easily have knocked your renal function, um, hurt your myocardium, uh, damaged your brain. You made it out of hospital, but what we didn't measure was were well, you as good as when you went into hospital? And I'd be worried that two hours of significant hypotension is damaging, very damaging for people. Thank you. Thank you.